great honor to be here to honor two people uh, who made this happen for not only the Fall River region, but for, for the whole entire state. There is no doubt that agencies like ours and others in, in across the state who have outpatient services are suffering and we are hanging on by our fingernails because uh, the rates of reimbursement are so terrible, uh, the demands are so great, and uh, we can't meet the demands because we'll be out of business if we try to meet the demands. So I see this as a first step, and um, I am so grateful to have uh, Michael Rodericks and Pat Haddad, who I, I have known for years, and Michael is on our board, who really listen to the needs of our clients and consumers and, and want to do something about it. Um, part of what we're doing, uh, we do here at STAR is that we, we received a SAMHSA grant so that we're able to do exercising and wellness programs for our, our uh, consumers. And uh, that has afforded me the opportunity to, to get to know really well some of our consumers who I just have the utmost respect for. And one of our consumers is here today, and he agreed to come up and just say a little bit about what STAR means to him and how important it is to have these kind of service. So Al Arujo, do you want to just come up and say a few words? Senator Rodericks and uh, Representative uh, Haddad uh, here. Uh, this place has been a lifesaver for me. I've actually been involved uh, with STAR for about 15 years, and um, recovery is a, is a up and down battle occasionally, um, but for me it's been a progressive uh, improvement over the course of time. Um, with your help and in, in the way uh, STAR has evolved um, especially this past this past year, I I really believe uh, wholeheartedly that it saved my life, and it definitely saved uh, the state of Massachusetts a lot of money because uh, uh, they uh, some other uh, providers uh, who have given me a great deal of help uh, highly suggested that I be hospitalized. Uh, my partner of uh, uh, 10 years uh, had committed suicide um, because uh, services were not made available to her and uh, it literally tore a, a hole in my heart despite the constant, constant uh, advocacy that I gave to her, uh, with her, to other people. Uh, her pleas were kind of ignored. Um, you know, she was shunted, shunted to the side um, and uh, her condition uh, worsened over the course of time. Um, I fully, fully believe that if, if STAR had the, the support, the way they, they have their support system today with, with uh, open group formats, that she, she would have, her care would have been much more improved. Um, but that's the way God works sometimes and, and we can't help that. Um, However, I was fortunate enough to be able to utilize that, that support system. Um, I stayed out of the hospital. Uh, I got well. Uh, I did a multitude of groups, uh, trauma, grieving, uh, post-traumatic stress, uh, uh, spirituality, uh, you name it. You know, I did the group, um, except for acupuncture because uh, I have a healthy fear of needles. <laughs> And walking with the CEO, that's, that's a, yes, um, and so uh, I'm very, very uh, pleased uh, and honored that uh, she asked, um, uh, Nancy asked me to share with you uh, the success that, that this organization has been for me, and especially uh, for the help that the legislators have been given to, to uh, provide some of that 5.5% uh, increase in uh, our uh, economy that supposedly Massachusetts had. Uh, uh, we can share some down in the South Coast. So, thank you very much. So now it's my pleasure to introduce Victor Gravio, who is in charge of our uh, Association for Behavioral Health Care. 
It's our trade association that helps us deal with policy and legislative issues. Uh, and I won't say lobbying, but um, he is tremendous. And, uh, oh, here's Harry. Harry Schulman that just walked in. Hi, Harry, from South Shore Mental Health. Um, we have a seat right up front for you, Harry. <laughs> um, Victor Gravio uh, replaced a long time person, and, and I was nervous because nobody knew as much as Betty Sun. Vic came in, and, and really, he's just a breath of fresh air and wonderful, and I have so much admiration and respect for the work that he does on behalf. Of, so, of organizations like mine. So, Vic, do you want to come up and say a few words? Thank you, Nancy. I really appreciate those kind words and for you and everybody here at STAR um, ho for hosting us today. Um, this really is a very exciting day for ABH and our 83 member organizations across the state. Um, in addition to Nancy, um, we have Phil Shea, the CEO of Community Council of Bristol County, Harry Shulman, the CEO of Social and Mental Health. All three of these individuals are on our board of directors. Um, but I really, um, on this issue today, in addition to recognizing Rep. Adams and Roderick, I want to recognize Nancy and her leadership um, because our members across the state have been struggling for years, uh, closing clinic sites, reducing outpatient capacity. Um, Nancy came to me probably just about a year ago this time and said, what can we do about this? And we kicked around some ideas with, with our other members and, and, and Nancy really took the bull by the horns and, and um, working with former Senator Joe Menard, um, went to Senator Roderick and Rep. Haddad and, and working as a team, we really came up with um, a, 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 not a perfect solution to the challenges that our patient providers are facing, but a really significant step forward. Um, to really help shore up the services that Al just spoke so eloquently about. So we are really honored to be here today. Um, it's a very exciting day for us, and, and we do want to rec uh, recognize Senator Roderick and Representative Haddad. But before we do, I'd like to ask Nancy, Phil, and Harry to come up and join me for the presentation. So we have uh, two plaques here. Um, uh, Senator Michael Roderick, in honor of your exemplary leadership in support of outpatient behavioral health services, July 31st, 2014, and Representative Patricia Haddad, in honor of your exemplary leadership in support of outpatient behavioral health services, January 31st, 2014. Thank you both very, very much on behalf of all of our members here on the South Coast and across the state. Thank you. <laughs> Begin. And I just want you to know that when um, the press calls me to ask me to talk about mental health issues, the first thing I say to them is, how much time do you have? And you better tell me when you're tired of listening to me, because I don't know how to stop. Um, it's, it ca really came to a head for me, I think you know, um, when the administration talked about closing Town State Hospital. And as I have worked more and more and more and more with you people, it's really, unfortunately, become very clear to me that the system is broken. And we have so much to do to fix it that it's overwhelming at times. So I just want to tell you that one of the things that I will continue, and as Michael said, the linebacker, I, just, I really, just, sometimes I, don't, I just put my head down and start going and I don't know how to stop. But I am constantly saying to the administration that South Coast needs to have every available option here in the South Coast. Not where they should, can, you know, we can bring you here or we can send you somewhere else. If someone has a heart attack or someone breaks their leg, no one tells them where they uh, have to go, either for their treatment or for their rehab. But that happens every single day in our administration when they're trying to tell us that there are only certain places that you can go. And don't even get me started on the reimbursement rates because they're embarrassing. 
So I just want to pledge to you that I don't know how not to, I don't know how to stop. So, um, you know, I just keep pushing and I'm going to push as hard as I can because they, the, the administration needs to understand that the need is here and we have incredible services in the community and we need to also make sure that when, when any of the clients present themselves in an emergency room in a crisis that they're in and out and not sitting and that whatever the length of service stay you need, that's what you should get. So um, keep helping me because I need your help. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Um, you know, this was really a team effort, and you know, it, especially with with Speaker Pro Tem Haddad, this would not have been possible because, you know, it's it's a little bit of a complicated issue. I mean, we in the legislature deal with, you know, seven thousand bills. You know, a budget that has tens of thousands of line items that deal with every issue that you can think of. And when it came to outpatient mental health services. You know, the fact that I serve on Stodd's board and I see the financials every month and I see how we were bleeding and it wasn't just us bleeding money with outpatient mental health services, hearing from Vic and what a great job Vic does representing the association and with Pat and Ben uh, who represents them at the State House and hearing from them and seeing the numbers that I knew it was just something that we had to address because these services are just too critical. And then I'm hearing from um, our community hospitals. I'm hearing from Chalter Memorial Hospital, I'm hearing from St. Luke's Hospital, I'm hearing from St. Anne's Hospital that their emergency rooms are just flooded and filled up with, with um, patients that need services that they can't provide and there's no place to, to, to send them so they're, you know, they're, they're in their emergency rooms not getting the treatment needed um, and taking beds and space away from those patients that need the treatment that they can provide. Uh, so we worked, um, there were a lot of reiterations, there was a lot of education on this and how these new codes work, the amount of money, the amount of estimate, uh, you know, estimating the cost uh, in the budget. Nancy made trips to the State House to meet with the Senate President, uh, multiple meetings with our colleagues, and, and we were successful. Um, and it, but it would not have happened if it, without this whole team uh, coming together, without, uh, without the other providers speaking to their legislators so that when, we, when I go to talk to my colleague, they're saying, oh yeah, we're aware of this. We're hearing about this also uh, in the community. Um, the squeaky wheel does get the grease uh, in the legislature and sometimes it's hard to get uh, the squeak in these wheels, but we did it. And thank you very much for your story because it's stories like that and personal experiences that we all have in our own families um, that drive us to do on what we do and drive us to spend so much time and so much effort on doing what we know is right. And, um, you know, we're lucky that STAR provides such tremendous services on a myriad of issues uh, in this region. Uh, and I'd be remiss if I did not mention that I just learned that Nancy's receiving a national award uh -huh. from the Association of Behavioral Health and uh, how she's recognized not just here in Fall River, not just here in Massachusetts but throughout the United States and actually internationally. For <laughs> <laughs> uh, and as busy as you are, it's always great to know that I have your cell phone. And when I call it, you answer it, as do I answer the phone when you, when you call me. So that's great to know because every day, Speaker Pro Tem Haddad and I are getting calls from constituents and getting calls from family members and saying, where do I go? What do I do? How do I provide um, these help, this help and these services from, from all kinds of issues? And having this resource here is just tremendous for us. And, and um, so I thank all of you. I'm very proud of receiving this. I will present it and display it proudly in my office in the State House. And God bless all of you. Yeah. Thank you. Difference, and it's a first step because we need more. So, <laughs> so I'm not letting you. This isn't the end. No. This is